So the right is still waging its war against diversity, equity, and inclusion in America. Ed Bloom, the conservative activist and attorney behind the lawsuit that ended affirmative action at colleges like Harvard, has been at the center of the fight in corporate America as well. Emboldened by Bloom's success, conservatives are continuing to bring their culture wars to the courtroom, focusing on other areas like venture capital firms funding black women entrepreneurs, such as Hello Alice, a company committed to helping black-owned small businesses. The plaintiff suing them alleges that he experienced what he's calling reverse discrimination and that he was treated differently simply because he's white. Joining me now is Neil Katyal, the lawyer for Hello Alice, former acting solicitor general of the United States and MSNBC legal analyst, and Elizabeth Gore, co-founder and president of Hello Alice. My thanks to both of you for being on the show because I find that this case, like others, are really important for our viewers to know about. Because as I said in the intro, the culture wars are not limited to just legislators, right? It's actually being battled out in courtrooms across the United States. Elizabeth, I want to start with you. Very quickly explain why the program that benefits minority entrepreneurs through Hello Alice has tangible results that actually benefits everyone at large. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on. And at Hello Alice, we serve 1.4 million small business owners, uh, particularly around access to capital in all 50 states. So we provide credit, we provide loans, and in a really important program that we run are small business grants programs at the tune of about $40 million. These are really critical for small business owners, particularly that don't have a strong credit history. You look at US veterans who have been deployed and haven't built a strong FICO score yet. Women have been in the care economy. You look at generational wealth gaps that haven't allowed that. So these grants are critical, and we're really proud that we've helped millions of small businesses scale in this way. Neil, let's shift gears and let's talk about the latest move you've made in court, a motion to dismiss filed by you on behalf of Hello Alice. Talk about the fatal flaws legally that exist in the lawsuit that's been backed by Edward Bloom. Katie, first of all, I just want to say it's such a privilege to be part of your inaugural show at this time slot. I'm such a huge fan of yours, and um, it's just a real privilege. Um, there is a war on affirmative action going on in this country, and sure, the Supreme Court last year decided with respect to higher education institutions that take public funds because of a specific law of Congress that was passed, those programs were generally impermissible. But Congress has never done anything like that when it comes to private activity. And, you know, this lawsuit is basically brought by Stephen Miller from the Trump administration. And, you know, he's been trying to persuade companies like Hello Alice to get rid of their programs, and he failed. And so because he failed, he walked into federal court to try and get them to do what he couldn't get companies to do on their own, which is get rid of their affirmative action program. And it's such a privilege to be representing Hello Alice because they're fighting the good fight here. They're saying, look, these are our dollars. They're, this is a private decision. We should be able to do with them what we want. And, you know, we thought conservatives were against kind of heavy-handed government regulation. But now here you are trying to police our ability to give a philanthropic grant to a black-owned business. That just can't be the law. Neil, I just want to stick with you for a second before I go back to Elizabeth. I mean, the dark money funding for groups mm -hmm. that are able to bankroll this type of frivolous litigation, I mean, that really kind of highlights what's going on here, right? The idea that if conservatives are trying to luck out, like you just said, by trying to pressure private companies to be able to change their policies, they're just going to take the tact of litigation. Is there any recourse for Hello Alice, for example, because of frivolous litigation that's brought like this lawsuit? Well, certainly because it's frivolous, we will be making, you know, arguments to that effect. We're not going to get into their funding sources or anything like that. You know, um, that's, you know, that's for others to, to look at, you know, to, to do with what they want. But look, we think that what Hello Alice is doing is absolutely part of the American tradition. And indeed, the Congress that passed the one law that they're able to even point to, to try and claim we're doing something wrong, that's the very Congress that did affirmative action for African Americans, the 18th 1966 Reconstruction Congress, which set up the Freedmen's Bureau and so many other things that benefited African Americans. Elizabeth, talk about the chilling effect that this has not only for your 
your your business and and the model that you're trying to promote which benefits again everybody not just one narrow part of the united states community but the chilling effect that you're hearing that's going to be happening for other people and other type of entities that are trying to provide a way to close the gap that has historically existed for opportunities well katie we're not just hearing about it we're seeing it firsthand and if you look at whether it's fire diversity contracts, which is $169 billion in this country, or you look at philanthropic small business grants, we're already seeing folks step back. They're waiting to see what's going to happen here. And that cannot happen for two reasons. One is we're just coming out of COVID. Small business owners have to get equitable access to capital. 99% of businesses in this country are small. They're our largest employers, and they can't not receive those types of funding. Second is, this is really going to impact the Fortune 1000. The most important suppliers and supply chain for the Fortune 1000 are small business owners in this country. And they actually won the supply chain war and debate right after COVID when supply chain was really tough, and they were having inshore programs and jobs, and they were successful. If we see those well, fire diversity contracts go away, if we see small business grants go away, this is going to impact billions of dollars for your coffee shop, for your child care center, for your local doctor, for your accountant. This is an issue that everyone needs to pay attention to. And I heard earlier on your show, you know, who's standing up? You know, who's not going to be a coward here? And we're standing up. We're going to fight this because we think it's important to support Main Street. Um, I want to say one thing to the naysayers out there before I say goodbye to the two of you. Hello Alice has provided over $40 million in grants to entrepreneurs of all genders, races, industries, and geographies. So you, naysay you naysayers, I wouldn't stand up against Neil Katyal in court. If I were you, I'd run away. Neil Katyal, Elizabeth Gore, thank you for being here and highlighting this really important case. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us.